everyone, Anthony here. It's uh, been a long time between videos, sorry about that, but back into it. Uh, we'll, we'll see how we go with this one. So this particular one was triggered off by someone who asked me about frame range settings here, so this uh, time slider stuff. But also it made me try, when I was explaining it, it's, uh, it gets us into knob default and the nuke root node, so I thought it was actually a useful thing to do a quick video about. So, obviously the first thing we're gonna do is do it by hand. So we want to set the frame range, instead of being 1 to 100, I would like 1001 to 1100. For those of you who are wondering why you why I'd be really particular about that, well, if you're on frame 1 and you go to frame 1 behind it, you're at frame 0, still okay. If you go 2 frames backwards, you're into negative frames. Negative frames are a problem. So let's just type the pattern out. Frame one, two, three, four dot exr. So the uh, you'd replace that with some something. So if it's frame one thousand, cool. Let's uh, replace that with oops, dot three. Easy. If it's frame zero, easy. So I'm just saying I want I have four reserved places for numbers. What happens when I get to a uh, frame negative one? Does it look like this? No, that just looks insane. Does it look like that? No, nah, that's frame one. Does it look like that? You can actually see I've now got five digits or does it look like that with three? It's just confusing, it's horrible. So yeah, if you've never had to deal with it, generally start with non, don't, don't start on frame one. You can refer to it as the first frame, but start a little bit earlier on so you have some room to work with. So anyway, doing this manually, what you would do is you'd bring up the script preferences. That is under the edit menu, project settings. Not, sorry, not preferences. Preferences is personal preferences. Uh, I meant project settings. So this guy down here, project settings. S is just muscle memory right now, so I don't even think about it. And you just type it in here, 1001 to 1100. Great, set, done, walk away, nothing exciting. But obviously we'd like to do that pythonically. Uh, so you could put a button somewhere here. You just press the button it sets the frame range correctly. And to do that, obviously we need some scripting. So first question is, what is this thing? How do we access this? So this is part of the project's settings and it's what we call the root node. So like any other node, like the viewer, a grade node, a blur, you just use nuke to node, nuke to node. Oops. Cool, and there we have it. So on this root node, oh, actually also there's another way to get to it, nuke root. It's that important, it's so critical, so useful, there's a shortcut for it. So you just go nuke root. Root, okay, so let's stash that. Okay, and everything on this is a knob. So if I mouse over that, you'll see it's called the first frame knob and the last frame knob. So the root, and then we'll get first frame, Oops. frame, and then we'll just look at the value. You know, it's just like any other knob, it tells you the value. And like any other knob, you can set the value. So we'll set this to 100, set the value to 100. And we'll do the second, uh, we'll do the last frame, we'll set it to 200. Last frame to be 200. Great, and we're done. So if all you wanted to do was put down a button and have it change, then you could just put this code, uh, this the script in a, a button and you're done. Right? That, that's pretty straightforward. What happens with this though? One of the problems is gonna be, let's say you're working and you wanna just like clear the script and start again, all right? So I just wanna throw everything away, just reset to defaults. So I've now reset everything to defaults. If I put a viewer up, you'll notice I'm back to one to 100. So this, this set of calls here, setting the value is equivalent to someone actually just going up, typing the value, closing. Now you don't actually expect that to survive between resets because it's just a user decision to type in some numbers like that shouldn't be permanent, but there is a way to do that. And that's through knob defaults. All right, so knob defaults as the name suggests is the default value of the knob when the node is created or reset. So let's just poke around quickly. Um, let's use the, let's let's still use the root. Let's look at last frame. So, it's actually a 
You set it in a different way, but you can ask every knob, what is its default value? So in the same way we can ask the value, right? You can also, because I've, I've gone and set it by hand there, you can also ask what is the default value? Okay, and you can see the default value is 100. So if you wanted to reset this thing, I wonder if you can actually do that. No. No, I thought maybe there was a right click reset to default value, but you can set it to the default value just by, uh, you just do something like this. You say the last frame, set value to that knob's default value. Right, and then there you go. It's reset to its default value. And you see this in all nodes. Uh, probably the most useful case is, let's say you have transforms. Um, this is this is where I've seen it used basically habitually. I have a filter here. Uh, it's currently set to cubic, which is the default value for a transform node in Nuke's generic stuff here. So often you'll want a different type of filtering just to keep things from becoming all super squidgy. Uh, so often you'll say, let's pick notch, right? So let's have a look at this transform node. I'll leave it up here. And it's a selected node. So nuke, nuke selected node. All right, it's so the transform. And then we want to get the knob, which is the filter knob. All right, and we'll check the value. Oops, value, not veil. Cool, it's currently at notch. What's the default value? 1.0. Uh, it's a little bit annoying. 1.0, it's a, in the drop downs. 1.0 is you got to count from zero. So zero is impulse, one is cubic, and that is the default value. We see that every time you put down a transform, it's, it's cubic. So let's actually change this so that every transform you put down from this point should have a default filter of notch. So the way in which you do that is by using the nuke knob, oops, knob default call. All right, the new knob default call as well should signal, notice I'm not asking the node and I'm not asking the node's knob to do this. I'm saying, hey, nuke. So all of nuke, a gigantic global setting, which kind of makes sense with what we said. We said that we want every transform to be created from this point on to have this filter defaulting to notch. So let's have a look at habitually, you bring up the help. So set a default value for the knobs in nodes that belong to the same class. All, right? All knobs with blah, 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 blah um, will default to the new value, All right? So let's, uh, you can read that and, and see the power of this one, but let's do it for the transform node. Nuke knob default, and the format is this. I wanna say on the transform node, I want the filter, and I want the default to be notch. All right, so I'm not gonna run it yet. I'm gonna put a transform down, cubic, cool. Put the menu transform down, run again, transform three and notch, done. So that's, that's, that's obviously what knob default is. And that also goes into the file clear command. So let's uh, do this again. Let's put some junk there, cool. File clear, bring up the viewer. And we reset because the root node is having its value set to default. So what we do to make sure the frame range persists through file clear, which is a reset, is we simply do this. We say that the root, actually, let me leave that on screen so you guys can grab it and reuse it. So we say that the root first frame, uh, first frame, and we just give it a value of, I don't know, 1123 or 1120, All right? So I've set the new default for the root first frame to be 1120. So now from this point on, when I clear this and I bring up my viewer again, you can see it's set to 1120. So I've changed the default position. So I think that's probably an example of where it's particularly useful. Like if you, there are reasons to use multiple approaches. You could do callbacks. Um, if anyone's interested, I can I can put something up, but we're just gonna focus on defaults. Uh, 
if you don't set it default, you're kind of making it simulate a person doing this and typing it in, which is great. You type it in once, and if you reset, you don't expect your changes to persist between sessions. If you want to set the defaults though, you do want to expect that every time I do a reset, so a file clear, I get back to my defaults. So if that's the, um, if that's the scenario that suits, that's probably what you want to do. And the example scenario would be, uh, you've started up, you've launched Nuke from the command line, you're in your particular shot or you're in a particular kind of sequence and you're working there. So no matter what you do, if you throw away your script and bring it up again, you just want to have the correct frame range that you're working on. So yeah, hopefully that made sense. Um, again, let us know in the comments if you want anything extra, but yeah, uh, hopefully talk to you guys later. See yes.